Hello everybody, welcome back to Flames Pyro Art Study Group and today we're having a look at the back of the bear's head we're reaching further back up this giant grizzly bear now up at the back there is a lot of tufts of hair that you can see much like a teddy bear <laughs> it reminds me of all the tufts so we just want to like darken the tufts up and try and darken behind each tuft as well to try and give it a little bit of pop so I'm using the medium spear shader here and I've got my setting at three and a half which is like a medium heat for this and I've been working away at inching my way further back up the bear's head now there's more of the bear's body up behind the head up here as he's such a large animal you know he's, he's hunched over so he's grabbed the fish and his head's bowed down and there is a lot more of the body up here but there's not tons of detail in it so with this area it's just adding some fur but this is the main area where the head stops around here you know where the main front of it finishes and then it like would sort of like drop off down the back and then obviously into the larger mass of the body so one thing what we have to do when we doing portraits of say images is try and read the image you know as to the best of our ability try and look into the depths of the piece and try and see you know key features and things it's telling you different shading opportunities and just use your imagination a lot, you know, in, when you're creating these tufts of hair, there's not really much rhyme or reason to it. It's just building like volume of fur. So we're only going to do a short session today of like 20 minutes. Now I noticed further back on the bear's head as well that there were some darker spots and these are a little dark so I'm going to have to really blend them out but there were spots where the hair comes out of dips at the back of the head. So what I will be looking to do is blend my way out of them. Maybe it's somewhere, you know, near like the crown that we'd have, you know, on the back of our heads. so it does sort of set like the tone of the depth of shading that you want to capture but you don't want to get there all at once you want to try and see it develop in your mind's eye you know give yourself opportunity just just keep touching around on these different tufts 
until images start appearing in your mind's eye of how you want it to look, how the light is cast differently on the tufts of fur, how in between the tufts there is less light so we can create a more three-dimensional look to the art and this bear has been a mega project when uh, my friend Tanya from the study group picked this bear I knew what we were in for and it hasn't uh, disappointed me in the way of what I knew what was to come an absolute beast of a project there is so much fur on a grizzly bear that it is unbelievable a couple of times it's almost broken me <laughs> where I felt I, I can't do any more and it's, it's got to go in the drawer and be left for a couple of months I can't deal with it it's too much no, I felt like that uh, about three or four times with a piece. But as it is a study group, the good thing with it being a study group is it's making me, forcing me to carry on, to get it finished. Otherwise, this would have gone in the drawer to be looked at again in a couple of weeks time or more so here's where like all the hair when you've got all the like tough you know the clumps running off to the sides it sort of starts to stop up here at the top But we still want to add that final bits of detail of fur. And it takes some time to do. You know, you're looking to shade underneath pieces of hair. And also colour up. You know, if we've got a dark parting in the middle then obviously it's darker at its middle point and it must lighten out as it goes. So I'm also searching for that to change the colour of the fur as I slowly branch my way from the middle and I go out into more of the light. I'm going to keep the camera on this angle and just work on this angle for the uh, 20 minutes. I think the next time if I ever did a grizzly bear I would not do it on a 12 inch by 8 inch board. I've filled the board almost completely with the bear. So as you can imagine it is and has been a mega project. I feel like we're closing in on the finish line now which is really good. I feel like we're getting somewhere you know. The end is in sight, it's still a little way off, but at least I can see that the piece is coming nearer to an end, which I will say hallelujah <laughs> once it's done. I just hope I come up with something that looks halfway decent 
put a lot of hours into this grizzly bear and I've learned so much as well from it and that's what the study group is all about and what the channel is all about it's all about exploring different forms of art different subject matter and exploring them and seeing how hard they are to do seeing different techniques we need to employ you know that it's a journey of learning and the slogan I have of every hour of burning is an hour of learning is so true you know an hour wood burning to me is just getting warmed up just being able to start seeing things in my mind's eye some of you may see things much much quicker than I do you know I maybe go over the top in my search in my own personal quest with pyrography art, you know, I'm, I'm not happy unless I try and put the maximum amount of detail in there that I can. Sometimes I'll get it completely wrong, but it doesn't matter. It's more learning. You've, you've learned something new about uh, tonal values and depth perception you know there's this bear has offered so much learning and i know tanya will have learned so much from this experience and i hope she finishes it through to the end and i single tanya out as because tanya has been with me in this little study group for a while now we've worked a few projects together and the goal is to get Tanya into the intermediate category in the Facebook group we have which is called Pyrography for Beginners and Beyond by Flames Pyro Art we run a monthly competition called the Pyrographer of the Month competition we have three different entry levels. We have beginners class for those who are new to pyrography art. We have the intermediates who are those who have, you know, been wood burning for a little bit longer and are very good wood burners. You know, they understand more about depth perception and different tones then we have the advanced category where it the really skilled pyrographers uh, display their works the ones who are you know have unbelievable talents and so what we do is with the pyrographer of the month competitions is to help inspire people and set them goals Say if you start off in the beginner's class, you can set yourself a goal to say, I want to get into intermediate level. So these study groups will help you to get to the next level with your wood burning. And then when you get to intermediate, you might, you know, you will have learnt a lot about pyro art. When you get to intermediate level, because like I said there are some very good wood burners in the intermediates so you will have learnt so much by the time you get into that class and then it's just a little step further to get into the advanced category there are quite a few wood burners in intermediate who are so close to going into the advanced class 
You know, it's just a journey of learning, exploring, enjoying yourself. I, I do these tutorial videos. I don't earn any money out of them or anything like that. I never, you know, say to anyone, oh, you have to subscribe. Uh, like Patreon or whatever, all that stuff. I don't do anything like that. They're, all the videos are free. And I just try my best to try and help you to see things in a new way way try and understand more about visual arts so by leaving comments on the videos that I uh, upload that helps me to get the videos out there to a wider audience you know or just smash the like button for me if you watch the video and you learn something from it, just leave me a like as a thank you. That's all I ask to let me know that you want me to carry on creating content for you. I mean, I can happily wood burn all these things off camera and just learn myself. I would rather take people on a journey with me and help them also to go on to this magical adventure of learning more about art and how to create depth and more realistic looking art. Most of us, when we start pyrography, we start off with silhouettes. And that's a good base to get you started. So you can learn how to just get an even tone throughout so all the silhouette. And after a couple of weeks where you can eventually make it all look exactly the same tone is when you're ready to step on to the next stage which is to try something a little more uh, technical still simpler images but keep you know every time you do a new wood burn go to the next level with it take it to a new image that look that's a little harder and keep learning, keep wood burning until you get to a level where you think, right, I can try and wood burn something with realism. And I want to try and capture more depth with my art. And that's where this channel comes in. This is what it's all about is learning depth and hopefully more realism. So as you can see, I'll keep working away, darkening up. You see how it takes time. You don't just get there in a second. I mean, you could, in theory, just keep following it out and spread out from, say, here's your crown area, your dark area. You could just keep branching out from there until you reach the end but I, I flip about a lot so I can see you know different things as it develops because you may be working on like a tone you know one shade in depth and suddenly discover you know it, it's not right and so you need to adjust it But the main thing I will say is have fun. If you don't have fun with it, then there's no point doing it. 
you know it, it's a passion it's it's a hobby it's an interest it's something you can really get lost in it's pyrography art it's a magical art form you'd be amazed at the quality of art you can create onto and into a piece of wood it's much like tattoo art where we're not just simply burning on the top surface of the wood we're actually burning deeper into the wood like the tattooist when he goes on your skin you know and he keeps going over and over and pushing that ink deeper down in the layers of your skin that's the same with tattoo art with pyrography art except we're doing it on wood and not skin wood has magical properties where it absorbs heat deeper into the wood and that's how you create your depth to your art So I will carry on with these tufts. I will keep time lapsing until we get to the end of the tufts and the ears. So I shall see you all at the end of the time lapse. Okay. Keep going, gang. We're almost there. I'll see you very shortly. 